All right, the meat of calculus, slopes of tangents and derivatives. This is pretty much the core of everything calculus. Now, we're going to learn a lot of other techniques to do this stuff, but um, it all starts with limits, and so we're going to do limits to find the slopes of tangents and derivatives. Uh, I talked very briefly in class today about uh, the tangent, what it is. Um, here's a just generic graph. Here's a function. This blue line represents a tangent. And that is the point of tangency right here. It's just a line that touches a graph. The slope of the tangent does, is equal to the slope of the graph at that one point. Um, now, I know the slope of the graph changes over the different x's. It's not, never consistent, at least for this example. But at that one point, the tangent has the same slope as the function. And that's important. That's going to help us out later when we get into applications of tangents. Um, we're also going to use a secant in part of this, and a secant is just like it is in geometry, uh, except it, it's not a circle this time, but it's a line that, hey, the bell's ringing, you can't leave yet, sit down. Hey, 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 you have to wait till I'm done. All right, good. Um, so anyway, uh, the secant is when uh, a, gra a line touches the graph twice. So all right, let's move on. Um, finding the slope of a tangent. Really, uh, I've decided the best way to show you how to do this is just to do a specific example. A lot of times in math, you get these weird mathy, Math League of America definitions, and then you apply it. I'm just going to go ahead and give you one problem. And here I've given you a graph. This is y equals x squared minus 3. And you have um, the tangent at x equals 2. There's 2, if you don't believe me. Hey, there you go. So there's 2. Um, and... Uh, we're going to try to find the slope of this blue line, which is the tangent. And it's pretty steep. You can look at it and tell that this is going to be a, a high sl slope, maybe 3, maybe 4, maybe 5, something in that vicinity. Uh, the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to start with a secant. So I'm going to draw a secant that goes through my point of tangency. So there's kind of our, our starting point. So first we're going to start with a secant, and we're going to find the slope of, well, that's a goofed up W, whatever. We're going to find the slope of the secant. Um, well, we know to find the slope of something that's changing y over changing x. This point, if my x coordinate is 2, if I plug it in 2 squared minus 1 is 3, is 1, whatever. 2 squared minus 3 is 1. So that's the ordered pair 2, 1. In order to find slope, to find the slope of my secant, I need this ordered pair right here. Um, and we can kind of eyeball it based on where I drew it. Maybe two, negative 2, 2, negative 2 point something. But really, we're just going to keep it generic. So instead of calling this point uh, by its actual coordinates, let's just call it x. And if my x coordinate is x, my y coordinate is going to be y. Or instead of y, we could call it f of x. So this ordered pair is x, f of x. So if I want to find the slope of my secant, I'll just do change in y over change in x. My y coordinates are f of x and 1. So f of x minus 1 over. And my x coordinates are x and 2. x minus 2. Okay, so we have the slope of a secant, but we don't want the secant slope. We want the tangent slope. So I've got to find a way to turn my secant into a tangent. Well, I really picked a point that's too far away. My second secant point is way far away, so I'm going to actually move that secant point a little bit closer to the tangent. Maybe I'll move it to here, and I'll draw a secant right there to through those two points. So now there's a new secant, and um, it's still not a very good, good um, representation of the tangent. So what I ultimately want to do, and here's the graph again, um, what I ultimately want to do is turn my secant into the tangent. And the way I do that is I take the second point and I move my second point closer and closer to the point of tangency. Uh, and you can kind of see my x-coordinate right here. I'm going to change this to 2. That's actually an x-coordinate of 2. Um, so I'm going to move my secant point, my x-coordinate here, closer and closer to 2. And as my x gets closer to 2, and you can see it up here getting closer to 2, the slope of my secant, as I move closer to 2, the slope of my secant slowly and slowly gets closer to the slope of the tangent. As x gets close to 2, 
a secant slowly becomes the tangent. So here I am, I'm really close to 2 now, and you can see there's not much separation between the secant and the tangent. Um, so the further away I am, it's not very good, but as x gets close to 2, my secant, secant slowly and eventually becomes pow, the tangent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my secant slope. I want to look at my secant slope as x approaches 2. And I use the word approaches very intentionally there. I'm going to look at my secant slope, and I want to know what happens to my secant as x approaches 2. And that limit gives you the slope of the tangent. We're going to measure the slope of the secant as x approaches 2. And once we set this up, we go into algebra. f of x is x squared minus 3. And I'll bring the minus 1 down with it over x minus 2. x squared minus 3 minus 1 is x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Hey, that's sexy. Watch this. X plus 2, x minus 2, over x minus 2. And we can cancel. Leaving us with just x plus 2, I'll plug in my 2 into what's remaining. 2 plus 2 is 4, and that is the slope of the secant, and that, or I'm sorry, the slope of the tangent, and that makes sense. If you look at that, that's a very steep slope, and 4 makes sense. So we'll start with the secant, and we'll take the limit, and we'll make that second point approach the point of tangency, and that turns the secant into the tangent. Yeah, 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 very good. Um, all right, I'm going to go a little bit more generic, and what I'm going to do with this is generate the formula we're going to use to find the slope of a, a tangent. And I'm going to go a lot quicker with this one, because I've already done this once. Um, again, we start with the slope of a secant. So I have uh, two points. I'll have some unknown x-coordinate, and then I'll have the known point of tangency. Uh, only this time I left it kind of generic. If my x-coordinate is a, then I'm going to call my y-coordinate f of a, so there's one ordered pair. This one over here, my x-coordinate is x, and my y-coordinate is f of x. And the secant slope... It's going to be um, the secant slope is f of x minus f of a over x minus a. But I don't want the secant. I want the tangent. So I'm going to take this second point, the one labeled x, and I'm going to move it closer and closer and closer to a. So x is going to approach a. So my tangent slope... My tangent slope is actually found by the limit as my x-coordinate approaches the point of tangency, a, of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. That is one of the two limit ways to find the slope of a tangent. This is the one I prefer. I think it's a little bit cleaner. There is another one that has h approaching 0. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. And, uh, yeah, this one's going to run a little bit long. We're already at 8 minutes. Um, so, let's use that formula, f of x minus f of a over x minus a, to find this next limit. Now, let's see, I'm going to take a screenshot of this, because I want to keep bringing it along with me. Let's see. Let's cut that, move over. We'll paste it in her. There we go. So, we'll just kind of stick that over here so we can see it. All right. Here's my function. My point is at 1, so now let's see. 1 is my a value, this is my f of x, and I'm going to plug into this limit. So it's going to be, um, find the slope of the tangent at this x coordinate, is going to be the limit as x approaches my point of tangency, which is 1, of my function f of x minus f at my point of tangency over x minus 1, and then we clean up. We clean up. f of x is x squared minus 3x minus f of 1. Ugh, we got to plug that in. So f of 1, 1 squared minus 3 times 1 is negative 2. So minus a negative 2 over x minus 1. So that's what x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. And then we factor x minus 1, x minus 2 over x minus 1. Cancel the x minus 1s, and now I can plug 1 into the limit. 1 for x minus 2, my slope is negative 1. So there's the slope of the tangent. 
Um, once I got down here and started writing in black, I really went through it quick because at that point it turns into the same limits we've been doing for about a week. Uh, this red stuff, setting up the limit is the new part. So once you get it set up, just go back into your normal limit mode. Uh, and these will usually factor and clean up very nicely. Okay, let's try another one. So that one was negative one. Let's try x cubed. x cubed. Well, now my point is x equals 2. Do we need to see the formula? Have you forgotten the formula already? A bunch of good for nothings. There we go. Let's see. So this one is my f of x is x cubed, so it's the limit as x is going to approach 2 of f of x, which is x cubed, minus f of 2, and f of 2 is going to be 2 cubed, which is 8, so x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2, right? And I just went ahead and plugged in my function, that is f of x minus f of 2. I just went ahead and plugged it into the numerator, and that's a difference of cubes. You need to learn how to factor that x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4. If you don't know how to factor that, you could use synthetic division, which works just as well. But for x minus 2, x minus 2 is cancel, and now I can try plugging in 2 again. 2 squared is 4, plus 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 is 4, 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. And there is the slope of the tangent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's do one more, and then I'll show you a different technique. We have 1 over x. There's my function at x equals 2. So, since you can't remember this stupid formula, here we go again. The limit as x approaches 2 of my function, 1 over x, minus f of 2. f of 2 is going to be 1 half, so minus 1 half over x minus 2. And we have to clean this up. Okay, here, I think we did a problem like this earlier in the year. Uh, Y'all may want to combine your two terms on top. I'm not a fan of doing that. I am going to find the common denominator for every single term in this problem. I have x, 2, 1, and 1. The common denominator is 2x. And I'm going to multiply the entire numerator and denominator by 2x because you get some sexy cancelage when you do that. Let's see, 1 over x times 2x. The x is cancelled, and you're just left with 2 minus 1 half times 2x is just x. And on bottom, we have x minus 2 times 2x. Can I cancel? You bet I can. Uh, just be careful. These are exact opposites. 2 minus x, x minus 2. Since they were opposites, we are going to be left with a negative 1 somewhere. So I've got negative 1 over 2x. I can plug in my 2. That's negative 1 over 2 times 2, which is 4. And so I get a slope of negative one-fourth. Um, what if, exact same problem, what if I wanted the equation of the tangent? Not just the slope, but the entire equation. Because that's normally what you're going to be asked. Very, uh, it's a, this is the most basic question in calculus, and that is finding the equation of a tangent. And a tangent is a line, so I'm going to need a point and a slope, because we're in love with point-slope form. It's much nicer than slope-intercept. Um, well, I got the slope. The slope is negative one-fourth. Do I have a point? Yep. Because I had to have the point to do this formula. My point is to one-half. So once you find the slope, if I ask you for the equation, you've got to put it in point-slope form, which is going to be y minus y-coordinate equals slope x minus x-coordinate. Ah, that's not the x coordinate. The x coordinate's two. There we go. So if I ask you for the ten of the equation, make sure you give me the equation. Don't just stop with slope. Sometimes I'll ask for slope. Sometimes I'll ask for the whole equation. Just make sure you you give me the correct answer, um, and you don't stop halfway through. All right. So that is one way of finding tangents. I'm going to show you a different way, and this might be something you're more familiar with. Uh, another way to find the slope of a tangent at a given point. It's going to be the exact same idea. We're going to start with some secant, and we're going to find the slope of the secant. You know what? Hang on. I'm going to pause this for a second, because I need to... I'm going to change the way this is oriented. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I decided this would be a little bit of a better problem here. Um, 
A different approach for finding the equation of a tangent. Same idea. We're still going to start with the secant. We're going to slowly turn the secant into the tangent. So let's see. So here's my secant. And I will have a second ordered pair. And I'm going to find the slope of the secant. Only this time, I'm going to define my points a little bit differently. In that last problem, when I was defining my points, I had this. I, I had some a, which was a point of tangency, then I just called the other point x, f of x. I'm going to change the way we label the second point in this difference, um, in this new setup. And what I'm going to do is instead of calling this x coordinate something, I'm going to <coughs> call the distance between the two points h. So if that's the distance between the two points, if this is an x-coordinate a, and I move h units to the right, then this point becomes a plus h. And <clears throat> if my x-coordinate is a plus h, then the y-coordinate for that point is simply f of a plus h. There you go. So uh, same thing, we're still going to use that point. We're still going to find the secant slope. The secant slope is my change in y's, which will be f of a plus h minus f of a over my change in x's, a plus h minus a. And what ends up happening is the a's on bottom cancel each other, cancel, cancel, and we're left with f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Now that's the secant, but remember we're ultimately trying to get the tangent slope. So my tangent slope We have to turn that secant into the tangent. So I'm going to start with my secant slope, f of a plus h minus f of a over h, because my a's cancel up there. And I want to see what happens to that slope as my second point, as this second point moves closer and closer. Only this time, the way I'm going to move the second point is I'm going to say I want the distance between the two to slowly approach zero. As this point moves closer, the distance h is going to get closer and closer to a distance of 0. So I'm going to look at this function as my h approaches 0. And that is a second way of looking for the slope of a tangent. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. It will give you the exact same answer. There's simply different ways of going about it. So let's try using this formula. I guess I have to do a screenshot of this one, too, because y'all are good for nothing, no memorizing people. Here we go. Cut. Come over here. Let's paste it. And we'll do a specific example with this limit derivative, or with this limit um, tangent slope. So I'll do the limit as I'm doing h approaching 0. Uh, this time my tangency is at x equals 1. So it's going to be f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. Let's see. 1 plus h is, or excuse me, f of 1 plus h, we'll do that in red, is going to be 1 plus h squared minus 3 times 1 plus h minus and then I need to find f of 1, which I'll do that one in blue here. f of 1 is 1 squared minus 3 times 1 is negative 2, so minus a negative 2, all over h. And then we clean this up, and it's going to do a lot of cleaning. Let's FOIL 1 plus h squared, so that's 1 plus 2h plus h squared. Distribute the negative 3, minus a negative 2 over h. And a lot of things will cancel. Everything without an h should cancel. Uh, and let's see, we have a 1 minus a 3 is negative 2, plus a 2 is 0. They cancel. Anything that does not have an h should cancel. Um, oh, that was it. Okay, so but we do have a 2h and a negative 3h, which will cancel. So uh, let's turn that into h squared minus an h. So we have h squared minus an h, all divided by h, right? Right, and I'm going to have to scroll down some. I'm going to factor out the h. h times h minus 1 all over h. I can cancel the h's. 
And let's scroll up a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. There we go. Uh, this is a limit as h approaches 0, so now I will plug in 0, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So there is the slope of the tangent at x equals 1, using the other definition for the slope of a tangent. How are we doing on time? It's probably long. Yep, I was expecting that. Still a little bit more. Uh, I knew this was going to be long because it's pretty important, uh, and, and I didn't want to leave anything out. Okay, so the derivative, we've actually been using derivatives, but the derivative is a, f a word that we're going to fall in love with. We'll use it multiple times a day. Uh, f prime, that's red, f prime. That is the notation for the derivative of a function. And what it does is it allows you to plug in multiple x-coordinates and get slopes for several places very easily. Uh, the derivative ends up being some kind of an equation. And it's based off your original equation. And so let's look at this one. Finding f prime of x for the following function. The way we find the derivative is we use the exact same formula we've been using. Um, and we have two. I'm going to give you the two formulas for the derivative. The slope. And what we'll do is we will just leave it generic. f prime at any point is the limit as x approaches any of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. We're going to be doing the exact same thing, only this time we're not going to plug in numbers for a. We're going to leave it in terms of a. So my derivative in terms of a could also be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Um, for the generic one, when you're looking for derivatives and you're not plugging in points, sometimes the a plus h one works better. So I'm going to use that one. So my derivative in terms of a is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And then we'll start plugging in and cleaning that up. f of a plus h is going to be, let's see, I'll do that one in red, a plus h squared plus 3 times a plus h minus 1 minus, and then in green I'm going to do f of a. And that's going to get in the way. Let's move you out of the way. Minus parentheses, my function, f of a, I'm just going to be my function in terms of a. a squared plus 3a minus 1 all over h. And then we start cleaning this thing up. You square a plus h, you get a squared plus to a h plus h squared, distribute the 3, 3a plus 3h minus 1, and distribute the negative, minus a squared minus 3a plus 1, and then we start to cancel, and again, anything without an h should cancel, a squared minus a squared cancels, plus 3a minus 3a cancels. Negative 1 plus 1 cancels. Anything that does not have an H should eventually go away. And I'm left with 2AH plus H squared plus 3H all over H. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, factor out an H. H, you get 2A plus H plus 3 all over H. The H is cancel. Those h's cancel. And then finally, I'm doing the limit as h is approaching 0. So I plug in 0 for h, not for a. And you get 2a plus 0 plus 3. And that is our derivative in terms of a. Uh, the point of having the derivative in terms of a is because now, if I want the slope, if I want the slope at 2, so f prime of 2 is saying find the slope of the tangent at 2. I could just plug in 2. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. If I want the slope at 6, I can plug in 6. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 3 is 15. And you don't have to set up a new limit every time you want to find the slope at a different point. You just plug in all the points to this equation. So that is what we will lovingly and affectionately refer to as the derivative. And I did have one more problem I want to do, but I've already... Um, probably giving y'all way too much excitement for the weekend with a 24-minute lesson on calculus. You could watch it twice if you, if you want to really overindulge yourself.
Um, hope you all had a great Labor Day because I'm sure you're watching this on Tuesday night or maybe even or Tuesday morning. And I'll see you later. I'm just talking so I can get 25 minutes. Pow, there it is.